Okay, well, last week we talked about a, a really long sermon series that was going to be unfolded, and it was about understanding discipleship, where um, today we begin that journey. So over the next couple of weeks, we will dive into the Great Commandment. And those of you who were listening last week already know that I've already contradicted myself. Because I said we would get to this Great Commandment in one week last week, and then I started studying it, and I realized that's an impossibility. So over the next three or four weeks, we are going to go through the Great Commandment found in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. And while we're here, I'll go ahead and read it. You don't have to turn there. I'll have you turn somewhere else a bit later. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So that's what we'll be diving into over the next three or four weeks, and it's going to be broken down into three parts. Uh, the first part is Jesus has all authority. The second part is make disciples of Jesus and all the nations. And then third, Jesus is with us all of our days. So with this broken out, did you catch the one word that was repeated more than another? The one you might think would be Jesus, of course. I think I said that three times and laying that out. But the, the word we want to focus on over the next four weeks is all. Okay, all. Where I want all of us to, when we hear the word all, to envision it. And I'm going to use computer language here. In the boldest print, the largest font possible, underline it as much as we can, and even put that neon flashing light to it. You know, it makes me think, those of you who watch Seinfeld, uh, Kramer had an apartment, and I think a chicken place moved in across the street. That sign was so bright that it was burning his skin, I think. I think that's how it went. That's how I want us to think of all. All right, when we hear it. So you can thank me throughout the week uh, in your jobs, and that's cool, and, and different things. When you hear it all, you're going to go, oh, Dave. So with that said, let's begin the first installment. But before we do, I'd like to discuss authority a little bit. And this week was tough for me because I realized how much authority I truly have. All right? One way I realized this was by coaching pre-T-ball, okay? <laughs> Not T-ball, but pre-T-ball. I realized that I have this much authority, and to kind of share that, uh, when you're trying to get a group of four-year-olds to come together and play as a team and learn, um, you all, you're always missing one or two. They just kind of, right? So this one girl, um, she just kind of shot off, shot off a little bit, and I went up to her, and you know, I, I try to get down to where they can see me, and, and um, she goes, hey, I'm like, this is going to be great. So, I'm like, hey, I think we need to really come over here and get back with the team. I need to tell you something real quick. You see these nails? <laughs> these nails, my grandmother and I went and got them. I'm like, okay, what does this have to do with <laughs> So that's the authority that I have. And these kids, they're great. I, I, I would take this authority any day and just hang out with them. But God's authority is completely different. God's authority is perfect. And we got to think of the word all when we talk about God's authority. So keep in mind, we're going to talk about God's authority, God's power today. And it's coming from a very flawed Individual. Okay, so my understanding of this authority and my ability to communicate this authority is flawed. Okay, even though I might be able to do 5% of it, it's still amazing and it's still powerful. So, with that said, um, every time I think of Christ saying, All authority has been given to me in the heavens and on earth, I think of an Old Testament account in Daniel chapter 7. So, if you would, uh, if you want to follow along, pull out your pew Bibles, and it's Daniel chapter 7, 
uh, to start with verse 1. While we're doing it, this scripture causes us to ask some questions. What authority did Jesus have? Who gave Jesus all authority? What is authority? Okay, what does the authority help those who believe in Christ Jesus to do? So with this laid out, in chapter 7 of Daniel, I'm just going to give us a small review. Um, I have to say my heart is in Daniel. I, I love that book, but maybe sometime we can go through it and get a bit deeper. But this is a, just a small overview of this part. In verses 2 through, I want to say 1 through 14, Daniel has a vision. And uh, in, a, in a dream, where in verses 2 through 8, he sees some really amazing things. He sees a vision of these four beasts that rise up out of the sea, which, just for the short time being, represent earthly kingdoms or human kingdoms. Then in verses 9 through 12, he sees the ancient of days reign, which represents a heavenly and then verses 13 through 14, he sees one like the Son of Man being presented. Okay, so to reveal the answers to the questions that I posed just a little bit ago, we must ask a few more. Who is the one like the Son of Man? All right, many of us know who this is, but for those who don't, we'll just go through. And there's many indicators within Scripture that tell us who this is. So the one like the Son of Man, the first indicator is the capital letters. So if you look at the O in one, the S in Son, and the M in Man, that helps us to see that this is, in fact, a deity or a supreme being. You know, being named Dave Parker, those of you who know baseball, I was called the Cobra quite a bit because of a baseball player who used to play for the Pirates and then the A's. And so, but whenever they would call me that, it wasn't with a capital C. All right, you see? So, and I'm nowhere near, I was nowhere near that game baseball to get a capital, right? So the second indicator, the word like, and this is the most powerful one to me. I, well, the third one's the most powerful, but I, I love this word like. It helps us to see that this son of man appears to be human, all right? But at the same time, it helps us to see that this son of man is different, completely different. The son of man is not only human, but he is, in fact, a deity or supreme being. So lastly, the most powerful one is this Son of Man is being ushered with the clouds of heaven to the throne of God. How many of us can say we've done that? None. Okay, so you see what the deity is. Just in case we still don't know who this is, what's, I'm going to go to the New Testament, non-specific verses, but there was one person who would call himself the Son of Man in the New Testament. It was the favorite name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And he did this for two reasons when he said the Son of Man. Number one was so people around him would be comfortable. Okay? That he, he was human just like them. That he understood what they were going through. But then, on the other hand, he would use it for those who denied him. Okay? That weren't able to say with their mouth that he was the Son of God. Okay, that's why he would do it. With Jesus Christ on the table, let's move forward to the next question. Who is the Ancient of Days? And again, indicators, capitalized, or capital letters in A for the Ancient and D for Days. This helps us to see that deity. And the second again is Christ is being ushered with the winds of heaven to this deity, right? Touching my face. I need a buzzer. Or a shot. Can we try that? All right. Since there's only one deity that has been there since the beginning, before creation, we, we can see who this deity is. Okay, there's only one deity that was not created, that never began to exist, that has lived every single yesterday and every single tomorrow. There's only one. And this deity can only be God the Father. Just in case we need a little bit more evidence, I'd like to read Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 through 10. 
real quick, and how it describes the Ancient of Days. As I looked up, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow, and the hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. Who does that sound like? God the Father. <laughs> but just in case, let's take a look at the omnipotence of God. The omnipotence, which means that this deity is almighty. Now we know how almighty is spelled, but I want us to break it apart to where we see the chicken sign, the all, right? Then mighty. This deity possesses unlimited power, which means all powerful. Okay? Yep, stop. Thinking of God's omnipotence makes me think of Genesis chapter 1, the creation account, okay, where the power of his voice, and I want us to really understand what that power is. God's voice to me is like all the water everywhere crashing down at the same time throughout the universe, all at the same second. And then at the same time, the most powerful thunder crashing all through the universe at the same time. Can you imagine what that sound would be like? Can you imagine I can't because it would make me fall straight to my face and just want to hide. That's how powerful God's voice is. Now with this powerful voice, God said, let there be light and there was light. Let there be an expanse which he called heaven and it was so. Let the water be gathered into one place. Let the dry land appear and it was so. Let the land produce seed bearing plants, fruit bearing plants and it was so. Let there be lights in the heaven. And with his hand, he perfectly placed the sun right where it is. He perfectly placed the moon and the stars. And it was so. He said, let the water be filled with living creatures. Let the birds fly above the earth. So God created them. He said, let the land produce living creatures. And it was so. And then finally, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, which screams the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So God created man. Male and female, he created them. So do you see what the all-powerful voice of God did? And we just skimmed it. <coughs> man. We see his all. We see his authority. And only a God that possesses all authority may distribute authority. Because if any of us have that authority, we may use it for other reasons. Right? So let's take a look at God in full authority gave the following to Christ Jesus in Daniel chapter 7 verse 14. Now I'm going to be reading words from the New American Standard Version because it's very important. Like what, what Jeff read, um, he said the first one was authority. I think we must understand that he gave Christ Jesus dominion, okay, which is more than authority, because I have that much authority over three t ballers okay? So when we say dominion, that means all authority, and there's a big difference. The next thing he gave is glory, but not just glory. He gave all glory, all distinction, all honor, and all praise. And then he gave Christ Jesus an everlasting kingdom, so that all people in all nations of all languages might worship him. And that's a key word, might. And I love the second word, or the first, second scripture that you read to. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will profess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But that's in heaven, on earth, and as my wife pointed out, below earth too. Okay? All authority. So do you see where this authority came from? Do you see what authority was given to Jesus? Now let's go back, but we don't have to turn back, to Matthew 28, verses 18 through 19a. Christ has all authority in heaven and on earth, which was given to him through his death on the cross for all sin, which was given to him 
through the resurrection and him conquering death, which was given to him through the ascension where he now sits at the right hand of God the Father. What other authority did Christ Jesus have? We can go through Matthew, which just lays out Christ Jesus' authority. He had authority in his teaching, unlike any other. There's not another one who can teach like Jesus did. He has authority to heal, authority to forgive sins, and he has authority over Satan and his demons. So with all of this authority laid out and hopefully understood, why is Christ telling his disciples then and his disciples today about the authority that God gave to him? Why? The key is in the next command, therefore go. Therefore go. Which is not just a command from Jesus to go to all nations, which applies directly to those disciples that heard it from his mouth, right? It also applies directly to his disciples in this day. But the commandment is the same, okay, whether to the disciples of that day or today, but it's a little different today, okay? It's a little different. Some are meant to go within these walls and make disciples. Others are meant to go within the town of Paxton and the state of Illinois, this county and the, and the country and across the entire world to make disciples. Not just go. Not just go throughout the world and make disciples, which would be a missionary thing. It's all a mission field. That's what we must understand. Right here is a mission field. Right outside those doors is a mission field. But not only is this a commission or a commandment, this is encouragement. Gosh, I love encouragement. Encouragement because you take the encouragement, right? This is encouragement from Jesus to go without fear, go without doubt, go despite what we're thinking. Go without our strength, our power, our agenda, our authority, and go with courage as we rest in all authority from Christ Jesus, given to Him by the Father. So in closing, with this understanding of authority from, that Christ Jesus was given from the Father, why do we fear? Why do we fear? We talked last week about waking up and you know, praying and reading our Bibles and living a life that is pleasing to the Lord. Why do we fear? Not only that, why do we fear investing that in others? Why do we fear talking to people about our faith? Why do we fear going from these walls to impact the world for Christ? Instead of going from these walls and having the world impact us for something else. Again, why do we fear? Why do we fear when we rest in Christ Jesus and he gives us everlasting courage, all courage, through his authority to do? So what are we to go do with this authority? I'll have to wait till next week. So let's go to the Lord and prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the Great Commission and your commandment, or your command to the disciples to go into all the world, Lord, and spread your name. Lord, uh, convict our hearts. Convict our hearts of many things. Um, if we're struggling our, in our day-to-day -day walk with you, Lord, equip us. Spirit, Spirit, give us the tools, the equipment to not only reveal your gifts, but to make them blossom. Lord, thank you for your authority and your power, and thank you for entrusting just a little bit to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we'll sing hymn number 399. What a friend we have in Jesus, and please stand.
our work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. To Him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever.